Good afternoon. This is the Afternoon News on Ghana Talks Radio, and I warmly welcome you to it. My name is Sandra Asante. 12 stories. 14 people, including two year old, burnt in Hesley accident on Akra Takradi Road. Also, children killed in Russian shelling of Blog of Flax, says Ukraine. There's some more stories after the break. We bring you local news, business news, international sports and entertainment news. Right here on GTR. GTR. GTR News. The news others choose. You're most welcome back from the break. So the Ministry of Works and Housing has moved to cut down the cost of housing units under the Affordable Housing Project by more than 50%. According to the Sector Minister Frances Asenso Bache, this will be captured under the new framework currently being developed by his outfit. He thus therefore called on the buy-in of the Ghana Real Estate Developers Association, Greta, to give meaning to affordable housing in the country. Speaking at the association's annual CE, CEO's breakfast meeting, which was then reducing Ghana's housing deficit, advocating for effective government intervention. He said, government's agenda is to ensure housing is affordable for the average earning Ghanaians. We are looking at a situation where we can build about $20,000 and $25,000 so that the majority of Ghanaians can afford instead of building at a cost of $100,000 and over. 14 people have reportedly been burned to death in an accident at Assem Asa community at Takwa in the Shama district of the western region on the Accra Takrade Highway. The accident, according to an eyewitness, David Ejikum, occurred on Tuesday around 12 o'clock p.m. The accident involved a tipper truck and a Ford bus with the registration number JW562821. The occupant on board and the Ford 15, including a two year old child, were burned to death beyond recognition. DSP Isaac Spoka has confirmed. Uh, and the information is an accident. See, immediately after Asamasa, uh, the last town. Ufri Central Western Region called Central, the last town. And TEC was Central and Western Shearso. And TEC, you know, Regional MTTD from Second D, EDH3, quickly, by Regional Police Commander Nankasa for Western Region, DCOP, Mr. Fusu, Felix Fusu Ajima, or not so EDH3, by Still on the Burns story, an eyewitness narrated that a tipper truck which was transporting stones collided with a Ford bus which was traveling from Takwa to Accra. He narrated the tipper truck driver was driving recklessly and at top, at a top speed. Hence, the Ford sparked fire shortly after the collision, killing the occupant on the spot. <laughs> I got to find a Janatum. The poor move for the money, but I'm going to go to the police. 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 I'm going to go to the that's really sad. To another sad story, 30-year-old commercial uh, motorcycle rider Kwame Pra has been shot by a passenger he was traveling with at Asen Dunkoni, Asen Fosu. The suspect boarded the Okada from Asen Adiambra to Asen South through Asen Fosu. On reaching Asen Fosu, the suspect who was carrying a big bag changed the route and demanded that the, the rider changes the destination to Asen Dunkau. The suspect on the west night of the motorcycle and shot the rider in the process. The victim is currently battling for his life at the St. Francis Hospital at Asen Fusu. The suspect is, however, on the run. The assembly member for Jabro Noso Electoral Area at Asen Fusu, Eric Mensa, explained. <laughs> I'm 
The Asin Fosu District Police Commander Chief Superintendent Sefasafa also confirmed the incident and also advised all commercial motorcycle riders to be security conscious in their dealings. Ghana's unfavorable COVID-19 testing regime at the Kotoka International Airport could drive away international travelers and consequently affect the airport status as the best in Africa, aviation expert Shen Mendes has said. KIA was ranked for the third consecutive time as the best airport in size in Africa by Airport Council International. Even though Ghana has received accolade for its stringent yet productive COVID-19 management guide, the testing regime at the KIA has been a major drain on the comfort and the pockets of passengers, both international and local. Speaking to the media, he said Ghana's unfavorable COVID-19 testing regime process a threat to the growth of aviation industry. Dr. Franklin Asiadu Bekwin, the Director of Public Health at the Ghana Health Service, had this to say about the issue. Thank you very much. So, um, we are not saying we are serious. I, I think what is clear is that if you have people who are fully vaccinated, then you are likely to get more exemptions. I think that is what, what is clear. Okay. Not testing at the airport. We have three layers. Yeah. So we have people who are vaccinated, people who are coming with PCR test, and people who are testing at the airport. Okay. So all things being equal, then there should be an incentive for people who are fully vaccinated. And that's what we are talking about, that those people are likely to be exempted when um, our figures keep on um, uh, as low as it's going. Mm, so you're saying likely, uh, and so it means that there's no conclusion on this uh, policy? No, as I said, if you keep on monitoring the, 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 the figures, and I think that um, if, you, if you look at it, before January, we were considering the review of our uh, our guidelines, and then Omicron came, and it changed the whole dimension. So this uh, uh, COVID side is a bit more fluid. So the idea is that if you keep on having a low number of uh, figures being um, projected, then people who are vaccinated, they are less likely to have um, more infection into the country. They are less likely to have a severe form of disease. So it's an incentive to motivate our system or the population to be more vaccinated. And that's how come they are likely that if you are vaccinated, then you may be able to have um, no death uh, by, by way of PCR. To some business story, the Vice President of Ghana, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, is set to host African Republic sector leaders in the third edition of the Africa Public Sector Conference and Awards APSCA 2022. The event, scheduled for May 11th to 13th, 2022, is being organized by the Institute Waves in collaboration with the Office of the Head of Civil Service and will end with an award ceremony. The event is an invigorating week-long event with activities such as sporting, games, awards, and dinner, among others. The conference will feature those leaders to share ideas, discuss the newest trends, economic issues, and experiences from across different countries. Ghana's economic health in the coming years will depend greatly on the ability of the government to implement further fiscal consolidation with target for 2022, including a primary surplus of 0.1% of gross domestic product GDP and a fiscal deficit of 7.4% GDP, the Oxford Business Group has revealed. Achieving the country's fiscal goals will require discipline, but Ghana has repeatedly demonstrated its ability to navigate major economic and financial challenges as Ghana youth population provides an ample 
dynamism and GDP growth is well positioned to accelerate in the short to medium terms thanks to a draft of structural reforms. The government is aiming for positive primary surpluses in 2022 to 2025, with the fiscal deficit returning to the threshold outline in the Fiscal Responsibility Act, suspended during the pandemic of more than 5% of the GDP by 2024. Additionally, it pointed out that the country is experiencing capitalizing on its variety of natural resources, coupled with it growing e finance and commerce sector, also stands in the good stead as the COVID-19 continues in 2022. With regards to the current economic situation, traders also lament the impact of fewer increment and city depreciation on their businesses. Hundred tubers of yarn, since I got hundred cents. Meanwhile, it was seventy third. It is a ma price, no. Apa fonti usuba. I saw usu untona. Umi kusho usuba tima kaba. Omo transportation. So sorry, I was buying a car. Body twenty third. You depend. This is the body, no. It's low feeling. Apa tona grass crowd. The mouth. Then this is crowd grass. I uba ba be true. I can't see where beni ni. Uba be true. Now come here. Third to one credit. This is. Tune into the afternoon news on Ghana Talks Radio on the International Front. Mariupol has been a target of sustained attacks by Russian forces because of its strategic position along Ukraine's southern border. For weeks now, the city has been shot near indiscriminately. One Human Rights Watch report released on Monday described the city as a freezing hellscape riddle with dead bodies and destroying buildings. Ukrainian leader Vladimir Zelensky has said about a quarter of the population, or 100,000 people, are still trapped in inhuman conditions. He describes the horror endured by residents in the midnight address, no food, no water, no medicine, and the constant shelling, and the constant bombing. Zelensky also said Ukraine officials and allies were doing their best to get aid into the city and more civilians out. He said on Tuesday about 7,000 people managed to escape the city. Three people, two of them children, have been killed in an attack on a block of flats in the eastern town of Zubenhe, the head of the military authority in Hunaskin said. The tragedy occurred in the evening when the Russian arm intensified shelling. A star exploded on the fifth floor, says Ashi Hadai, adding that fire broke out in a business and an education institution. We are in Nigeria and 34 people, including two soldiers, have been killed in northwest Nigeria's Kaduna state. The attack, which took place on Sunday, was reportedly carried out by heavy armed criminal gangs known locally as bandits. Reports suggest at least four locations came under attack in an estate by the assailants who also destroyed over 200 homes and burnt down shops on Sunday. One woman remained missing. 
A 24-hour curfew has been imposed by the Kaduna State Government. The attack coincided with a raid that killed 16 in the neighboring Zamfara State. The criminal gangs were officially declared terrorists by the government in January. Amnesty International has condemned the Kaduna attack and called on the government to bring up perpetrators to justice. South Africa's uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa has announced an end to more COVID-19 lockdown restrictions from Wednesday. Most of the country has been back in business for months and the latest changes will see the return of popular social gatherings and more economic activities. President Ramaphosa says local research shows that between 60 to 80 percent of the population has some kind of COVID-19 immunity either from previous infection or through vaccination. Because of this, he he says the government is moving to further reopen some industries and ease mask wearing for citizens. The new regulations will see the reopening of stadiums, theaters, and music venues to the public, which is expected to help revive sports, tourism, and arts industry. Still on international stories, the parent of Pulitzer Prize winning Indian photojournalist Anis Sadhu are seeking legal action against the Taliban over the Assange death. The 38 year old realtor journalist was killed last year after the Taliban ambush while reporting in Afghanistan. His parents have moved the International Criminal Court ICC against six Taliban leaders. They allege that the Taliban took him into custody, tortured, and killed him before mutilating his body. Initial reports suggested that Sadiq was killed in crossfire during the attack on 16th of July in Kandahar spin Bodak, but Reuters later reported that he was alive and taken to a mosque nearby for treatment. It remains unclear what happened after. To some entertainment stories, Megan the Stallion's record label is come to sue in the rapper weeks after she filed a lawsuit against them. It's over a row about the constituted an album with 1501 Certified Entertainment saying has something for the hottest record that's not qualified. Megan has already claimed that it does not meet the condition of an album. In a document said by the radio news beat 1501 wants an order in its favor and damages award for claim Megan has repeatedly breached her contract. The 2021 release debuted at number three on the U.S. Billboard Top R&B and Hip Hop Albums chart in its first week of release. This is where I draw the curtains on the afternoon news. So thank you so much for tuning in. You can log on to our website www.ghanatalksradio.com for more news updates. My name is Sandra Asante. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for the sport tidbit. Have a pleasant afternoon.